Right, so we're going to take a look at some more advanced NLP, natural language programming commands, and some extra things we can do using our NLP. So first we're going to do, let's make a new goal. Um, I'm going to call this one advanced NLP, and we're going to do this for our rocket shop again. And let's create and add our first journey. And as usual, our first journey is going to be navigating to our URL. And as we normally do, we're going to add a checkpoint. And the first checkpoint I'm going to call here store values. Let's create that checkpoint. So we're going to use some NLP to be able to store information in a variable. And we, when I type in store, you can see I've got two different uh, commands that I can use there. Store value, which will store the value of something. And store element, which is a little bit more interesting, what we're going to take a look at here, which will store the element details of something. So there's different ways we can do that. I wanted to just introduce our element inspector over here, this little mouse icon, this mouse cursor icon here. If I click on that and I hover over, it will show me all the different elements with a little hint about their underlying structure. And if I'm in advanced mode with my dev tools on, when I select something, so say I want to select this rocket image, it will actually bring that up. I can see that down in the console down here. I can see the details about it, but I can also use that with my NLP. So if I now do store and I'm going to do element and notice at the top, it says this is the last picked element. So whatever I've last used this element picker here and I've selected with my left mouse button, I can use that in my NLP. And you'll find this in lots of commands. You can use that if you don't know what the hint is for something. That's a great way to get something selected. So I'm going to store that element and I'm going to store it in a variable. So to do that, I need to give our variable a name and you do that with a dollar in front of it as a variable. That's going to tell it it's a variable we need to store and I'm naming that variable element. And when we save that, you can see it's actually picked up the selectors from that item that I selected. And if I select this uh, step here and look inside effects, you can see all of the information it's stored about that. And we could then use that in our assertions to assert against any of these properties. We've got all of the selectors in there that we can look at. We've got um, the URLs are in there, all the different properties that we could assert against. So it makes it really valuable in our tests to be able to store elements in um, variables and store values in variables to assert against. Now, as well as storing, we can also use our NLP for mouse actions. There's loads of mouse commands, so I'm going to add a step here. And when I type in mouse, it brings up loads of the commands we have. I'm not going to go over all of those. Um, I will put a link to our documentation um, in task, so you'll be able to look at our full NLP library to see all the different commands available and how they work. But we'll look at a couple of those. So one of the nice ones is mouse over. And let's give that a hint of shopping bags. It's going to mouse over our shopping bag icon. It's not going to do much with the way our application's um, designed, but if you had, say, a menu where as you hover over something, it has a drop down, that's when the mouse over command becomes really useful. Um, so that's a really useful one. We also have a uh, mouse click. Now, mouse click. We do have our click commands. The mouse click could be useful if you've got maybe a React or Angular where a mouse click will actually make it behave slightly differently. OK. Um, so let's do that with our shopping bag. And you can see it's taken us into our shopping bag page there. But let's remove that step. I want to go back. So I'm on my main page. So let's just run that back so I can go back to my main page easier to work from here. So we're there. OK. Um, there is also a mouse double click command. So if I go in there and do mouse double click, if you've designed an application that needs a double click, you've got mouse double click in there as well. As I said, lots more that you can look at in our documentation. So we will give you that in the task so you can have a look in there as well. We have our scroll command. So if I type in scroll, whoop, if I spell it correctly helps, scroll and I could do scroll to I know at the bottom of our page we've got about us if I say that it will scroll down to an element so I can scroll to any element on my page by using its hints or selectors I could also do scroll to top and it will scroll to the top of the page or scroll to bottom 
and it'll scroll to the bottom of the page. So we've got our controls to be able to scroll around our pages as well. So nice, useful little bits of NLP. Now, let's add a checkpoint. Let's do something a little bit more complicated. Let's do switching tabs. It's really important to be able to work with tabs on modern browsers, and we can do that in Virtuoso with our NLP. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a navigate commands, and I'm going to navigate to the Virtuoso website. Okay, but I'm going to do that in a new tab. And let's save that. And you see it's popped up a new tab with our Virtuoso website. And we can tell which tab is active in Virtuoso. It isn't necessarily the one we're looking at. The active tab is whatever this blue circle is on. So I could switch to previous tab. And when we do that, we'll see our blue circle should move over to our Rocket Shop tab. There we go. But what if we've got multiple tabs open? We want to choose uh, to move to a specific one. We could have many tabs open. So what I can do is say switch to tab one. And we number our tabs. And they're numbered from the first tab we had open. So the first tab is zero. Our Virtuoso tab here is tab one. So if I switch to tab one, we should see our blue circle jump over to our Virtuoso tab. And there we go, we can see that. And we can do the same thing by going switch to tab zero. It will go back over to our Rocket Shop tab. And there we go, we can see that's done there as well. So we can control tabs using our Virtuoso NLP, which is really useful. Right, final checkpoint for this section. Let's look at what we can do with key presses with our NLP. So as well as being able to enter information into a page, we can also do individual key presses. But let's let's write something in our search box so let's write james in search and there you go you can see that's written in there but we can then use our nlp to do keyboard interactions rather than having to use mouse actions so maybe i'm going to say press and i'm going to do control underscore a because that's the key command i want to do now when you do a keyboard command whenever you type in a key it must be in capitals um, for that to work so I'm doing press control A, and that should, there we go, highlight everything within our search box. And then maybe I'm going to do press delete and delete what we've written there. And you can see we can do that. We could also use the keyboard to navigate around our page. So maybe we're going to do press tab. And you can see that's now jumped over to highlight the magnifying glass button. And let's do that again. And you can see it's moved over to this little paper airplane button and we could do press enter and we're actually navigating around our page using the keyboard as well so you can test that sort of work as well so um have a go at carrying out these actions and also view our documentation or we'll put the link for for much more of our nlp and the things that we can do there